when you mentioned uh, earlier that we are so intelligent now that often we lose our instinct because we think that intelligence is more important. Um, well, you don't want to lose your intelligence, but you also want to maintain your instinct. So mm -hmm. how can you be really smart and also have really good instincts? That's, that's why I wrote the book, because I don't think that uh, one exists at the expense of the other. I, I really do think, this is the way I like to say it in the book, that, that in intellect loads the gun, but instinct pulls the trigger. You have to bear in mind now, Sally, this whole book is inspired uh, from being on a, in a safari in South Africa. So I'm out here with animals, okay? And, and all of a sudden I begin to realize that, that as I went on the journey between the zoologist and the Zulu, that the zoologist who informed me uh, was amazing at telling me about the animals, but he couldn't find them. He could explain them, but he couldn't find them. The Zulu could find them. And all of a sudden, in the relationship between the, the intellectual zoologist and the instinctive Zulu, we had a completion and a compatibility that was so comfortable to me that it reflected back on how I have lived my life. What do you do if you got to have a job and you have to work every day mm -hmm. and you don't really like your job, but you have a family to support and you go food to, work. to put on the table <laughs> and you go to work and you really hate your job and it's not creative and it's not what you want to do, but you don't have any choice. What, what do you say to people who are in that situation? I think you have described it probably 50, 70 percent of the country. Uh, and I think you do what you have to do, as I did. I did a lot of things that, that were not instinctive to me. But I think as you are doing those things, and I describe it in the book as being in a cage, uh, like a lion who is raised in captivity. Uh, always sensing that there's something beyond the bars but unable to access it. I think many times people do what they have to do and not what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't profess to have all the answers, and I think sometimes you're in the middle of your life before you even know the right questions. And uh, even when I wrote Instinct, I'm not suggesting that everybody comes here immediately and hits it. But through a process, sometimes you're in the middle of your life before you really know who you are. You really know what you're worth, you really know what you got, and you really know what matters. Early in life, sometimes, life does not afford you the luxury of thinking about you. You have to think about the kids, and you have to think about other things. When I was 26 years old, I lived in a house in Dunbar, West Virginia, that I couldn't keep the utilities on. And the other day, I had two kids and a wife at that point, and, and couldn't keep the phone on, was trying to get a job and uh, using my neighbor's phone up the street. The other day I went back to West Virginia for a funeral and at 56 I had the driver drive me over to the house I lived in at 26. And I stood out in the yard and I looked at the house and I looked at the 26 year old man, young man, who used to climb out of the window, of the bedroom of the house into an unfinished uh, addition that I started and ran out of money and couldn't finish and look up in the night and cry and ask God did I have what it took to, to raise my kids and had I bit off more than I could chew and was I over my head. I stood there my beard's now white and I'm older and my 56 year old self looked at my 26 year old self and said you made it.